It's a bird. It's a plane. It's this is Jason J. Lewis, the voice of Superman on Justice League Action. This is Mark Wade, writer of Superman Birthright, and you're listening to The Krypton Report. <laughs> to the Krypton Report, the All Things Kryptonian podcast, where we talk about anything relating to Superman, Supergirl, Krypton, DC Comics, and TV, movies, video games, comics. I am your host, Tyler, the Superman of Blue, the Man of Tomorrow. It's that time again for another entrance into the kingdom of Kingdom Come. We're back. I'm still sick. That's okay, because James is here. We're going to talk Kingdom Come issue three. Are you ready, James? Aye. All right. And this uh, this one's called Look Up. Or is it? No, it's not Look Up. It's just Up in the Sky. <laughs> Which is, you know, my motto to life. I was going to say, do you have, the, um, you have the issues where it says that that's the title? I don't see it. Um, I have the trade paperback, and it just says Chapter 3, um, and it has, you know, the cover with Shazam and all the characters, and it says Up in the Sky huh. at the bottom. You know what? If I got my book out, I, I would probably – which is issue by issue. It's not the trade. Which is, which is cool. I like having, you know, the ability to both. So – all right. So the first thing we see is we see Shazam in a lightning storm with some scripture, which is always awesome. And we have Norman McKay talking with Spectre. And the one thing I found interesting is that shit. I was muted that whole time I was talking. Hey. Yeah. Could you? Okay, I'll fix that. Sorry, people. That's what happens when you're sick. Um, but they don't refer to it as a gulag. They, c- they call it the gulag. You know what I'm saying? I thought that was interesting. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're not like, he built a gulag. and Because even later, Superman refers to it as the gulag, this. And they, they just use that term. You know, not like the prison or the holding facility. Everybody just calls it gulag. Well, it's a pretty serious term, you know. Uh, from yeah, from what it meant back in, in Soviet era Russia. Right, I found it like as a dark term. So the fact they just use that as the standard term for it, I find it very, very interesting. And Superman wants it to be a place of rehabilitation. And right. It's like, you know, you don't name it a gulag and say the like, <laughs> happy place. Right. Um, he, he does want the, the criminals incarcerated to rejoin society. It's, it's law-abiding citizens. And I mean, and then they show us inside, and it just looks like nobody's looking at set. Like, they're in their own world. And we just have Mr. Miracle, like, watching over them. But it's their own world is what they're in. Inside like, the, oh, so turn the page. Uh, headquarters. Yeah. Yeah. The, it, the prison looks like the Legion of Doom. Which is pretty. Well, I like the fact that when you're seeing people in there and – since we're the page where um, we see people sitting and talking, and we see like the new Catwoman who looks like she's from Alien, and then we see Count Olaf over there, you know, the vampire. Yeah. That's that's what I was like. I was like, oh, cool! Look, it's Alien and the vampire, and then Magog is in his uh, and this cell. clown chick looks like girl from Rock. Oh, uh, Magenta? Uh, yeah, I think that's her yeah, name. Yeah, that's, that's the fun of this book, is like just paying more attention to the background stuff. Once you've spent so much time reading the story and you know it and the foreground, we get the giant hologram of Superman preaching at them. It's right. Wrong. You know what's really cool about this place, though, is... The person they're using to 
keep all this in. It's uh, Scott Free. Mr. Miracle. <laughs> Which is the greatest character? Which is like one of the greatest character names right. ever. That'd be almost like the person who's always getting caught. Like, what is his name? Scapegoat. <laughs> <laughs> that would that would be I like this is Scott Free's uh, best friend scapegoat <laughs> and then like you know we see more more people that are there um, one person looks like peace like just an embodiment of like the 60s and I think it's interesting because at first, when I'm watching, when I was reading this, and it comes out, I realized it took me a moment to realize um, how Luther and Billy are watching the gulag. Um, yeah, what are they watching? Right? That's what I was like, wait a minute. It's like a, um, a sphere monitor somehow and I'm not even sure who that is I'll be honest yeah that's that was that's my thing is that I've I've never known never ever looked it up apparently about it there's that cool thing in the back I was studying you know it tells you all the people that are in here of the trade but then we go and we see this is interesting the council the quintessence the quintessence all power um you know high father the wizard Shazam Gamfit someone else I'm not sure who it um, is the phantom stranger and then there's a fifth one that I can't who is it oh, now I'm now I'm frustrated Yep. Thank you, Alex Rocks, for your amazing work. But we get, I mean, Dead Man. Oh, good old Boston Brand. Beans. We'll take beans. I just hear Boston. That's why I think of Jim Gaffigan talking about Boston's <laughs> baked beans. It's fun. <laughs> He's like, you know, places are known for stuff. He's like, can you just imagine being Boston? Beans. We'll beans. <laughs> right? Like, why is Boston beans? Yeah. Who knows? But it's pretty interesting, you know, just um, Mr. McKay talking with Boston about who he is and what his job is. And talks a little bit about um, the specter. Telling Norman to look him up when he crosses over. To be something you'd be like... It, as as a religious man too, for him, that would be. Like, what would that make? Oh, there's a line that he has in this that I love, and I'm gonna paraphrase it. And I'm not sure where it's in this book, if it's in three or in four. But oh well. He talks since seminary. He's been more of a philosopher than um, a pastor. I think is what he says. But I thought that was a really good line. Um. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure it was in, actually. So if we get to it, I'll yeah, because like, oh, I remember, I just remember reading it. Um, and and that's what, yeah. Um, Norman's a really good character. He is. Um, and then we get, then the next part's Superman in space. With a breather. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's when he's talking that Pastor no uh, Pastor and no Frank. I can't imagine and since seminary I've been more philosopher than my church to preach that God is a person rather a force and names. Since it's like Ramakushan and that motivates us to master our You found it before I did. Good job, James. I like that we see Superman and Wonder Woman um, with breathers on. 
as they're sitting outside the tower. And Clark skips rocks on asteroids. That's pretty BA. Sure. I mean, I wish I could do that. Right. Right. I like how they're talking, how he's talking about somebody, uh, how he's talking about Brainiac. She said, did he hear you? Actually, no, not, not in a airless, uh, actually not in, in airless space. He, he got the message. It's funny. I almost wonder if this isn't for breathing, but for, maybe for Wonder Woman, I'm sure. Uh, it's more for breathing, but for Superman, I think it's actually more so he can communicate. I mean, that makes well, because as as we get to a later point in this book, we discuss Kryptonite, and and Kryptonite doesn't phase him anymore. Uh, Which is one of my all time favorite yeah, parts about this. Story. Is that the height of ability. Is one of my all-time yeah. favorite. Parts. Which, in my opinion, makes complete sense. Um, the the even though he is aged, uh, his cells have still just continued to grow strong. Yep, that makes sense. And the yep. pseudoscience, it is super science. It makes sense to me. I like what Superman says here when they're talking. He's talking to Lynn. He says, only the weak succumb to brutality. It's a very strong, strong line. Yeah. Well, they're discussing um, how Wonder Woman has been uh, disowned by her people. She's no longer the... uh, She's no longer the ambassador that she was. Uh, she was disowned by her mother, and uh, they suggest that she has failed in her mission to peace. Uh, and and which is harsh. I mean, that's harsh. That's oh, harsh. absolutely. Like, you know, she's she's the character. Can do and be, uh, and uh, she's also. But like I said, she can be both. She can be that soul, and and she is willing to. She is willing to take life if it's necessary. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's the soldier in her. But it's interesting. She's a she's a complicated character, you know. Wonder she be I, yeah, absolutely. Right? I mean, she's she's got to be this. She's got to be this peace loving, uh, promoting person. But she's been trained to be a fighter her entire life. Uh, to you know, to kill without remorse when necessary. She's she's a contradiction to herself, so she's got to be she's got to be very. <laughs> it always makes me think of that like meme of Samuel L. Jackson for Star Wars. Was like we're keepers of the peace, <laughs> peace, MF. And it's you know when he cuts. Uh, yeah, I, re- I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, that's what I think about. When uh, when I see this, so yeah. But now, well, peace peace reasons. can sometimes be achieved by having the head. I mean, just listen to Peacemaker. I cherish peace with all my heart. Kill every man, woman, and child again. Remember some lines that you just cannot say unless you're John Cena. Because only with John Cena does it make sense. Well, you can't see him, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, 
I mean, could you imagine being on set like, who said that? <laughs> right. I can't. Act, can't. You can't see me. I mean, like, John, see? Anyways. It's just your persona. Here, you're Peacemaker. Yeah, but who knows, you know. All right. So the next page is where we see the, basically the propaganda imaging that they're feeding into Billy's mind. And we're seeing how Luther is torturing him and shoving the worms in his ears. So he can't, so he, because it took me, like we talked about before, like for me to remember that this is Billy. He's not Shazam right now. Even though he looks like Shazam, he's not Shazam. Because in this is like, Shazam, Shazam is Billy grown up. Um, which I, I, I had to remind myself about. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, that's kind of, and they don't have to actually draw him too differently. <laughs> I told you before, I'd love to write a Shazam story where um, we find out more about, like, it's like a, it follows this, like, overweight middle-aged dude who's, like, given up on life. And then he says Shazam and turns right. out Shazam. Like, yeah, Shazam. Where, whereas instead of being a kid who gets to be a grown-up and, and have all this wisdom and strength and power, he's, a, he's an older man who's having trouble with his normal life. And every time he says Shazam, he becomes youthful again of energy, strong, all that stuff. Exactly. Absolutely. To write. Um, we got uh, Bruce said Lex is uh, manufacturing bat bots. Which just the the term saying Bruce and Lex together should be scary enough that you don't want to like that should scare you to death, you know, like Bruce Wayne, Lex Luthor as a team. Oh man, that ain't working right. for this one, boy. Well, which is nice, you know. Come later on and find out that he's not actually with Lex. Like, he has a similar goal, but he knows Lex is to be trusted. Yeah, because he's yeah. Batman. Like, he knows what's up. Like, he's like, yeah, guys, come on, give me some crap. Give me some slack here. Like, you, guys, you know. <laughs> like, right. You know. So, this is where we get to the um, Mankind Liberation Front. Um, there it looks to be like their NORAD bunker. That's what I was thinking. That um, was like NORAD. Like they're, they're, they got their hands on the Doomsday Clock. That's what that was I my am. mind. Like, and look who all is there. Well, we got Bruce's people: uh, Oliver Queen, Ted Port, Ted Grant. I think can't remember the other. Back in issue two, Dinah's there somewhere. New Kid Flash, but the one that's most interesting is a guy in a trench coat who uh, is Martian Manhunter, who's basically broken. He's mental. He's broken. They talk about how he opened his mind to all humanity, and it destroyed him. That's heavy. Right. I 
and it's it's neat how you know he's staying there and he's there to help Bruce with a certain assignment. Um, and then you see the specter kind of raise up the facade, and we see the Martian Manhunter. So, yeah, which is really cool. Specter showing, showing, okay, about yeah, who it is. Yep. But he's he's got him there. He's got Martian man. We get to find out shortly. <laughs> So it's interesting how Billy walks around looking like a serpent. Yeah. yeah. And everyone's like, oh, it's just Billy Batson. I'm like, yeah. But don't they know like who Billy Batson is? If he says Chisholm. Right. So the next part I find most interesting where we see Superman like walking down the world and they're talking and um, they're there and they're talking about the flash and how fast he moves, but he actually vibrates that he can detect the specter in Norman and he actually pulls Norman out of where he is, the plane of existence he is with the specter. And of course, power woman's ready to punch him <laughs> in the face. No, she's just about to destroy something. About to splatter. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and why are you here? And Superman catches her hands like, well, I'm like, Superman, you don't have to put your hands on your hips right now. You're looking at an old dude, and you're Superman, you know? So just peel <laughs> back a notch. And he's like trying to talk to him like, I'm here to warn you. And, like, I love Alex Ross's drawings and stuff, but sometimes Superman looks a little too on his high horse. Like, you know. Like, and then, you know, Norman's trying to say about what's going on. He's like, Armageddon is hardly on our calendar. These are grim days, but we have matters fully under Holy God, says Red Robin. Would be when he has talking like that. Nope. Spoke too soon. He's like, Superman, calm down. We never have this stuff under control like you think we do. And then um, Wonder Woman takes charge. And then Superman says, why did you, I mean... I think this part right here in the story is probably when Superman's at his worst, for lack of a better term. Um, yeah, I mean, well, you know, he doesn't, uh, he doesn't know everything. Like this is this is a point in the story where, you know, what he what he wants isn't exactly working, but he knows that he can't go down the route that Wonder Woman is suggesting here. So this is this is the time where we get to see Superman kind of lost in his thoughts. Yep. And Wonder Woman's taking over because she's Wonder Woman and that's what women do. They take over if you're not paying attention. Nothing wrong with that. Oh, just saying. Come on, Superman. Got to be smarter sometimes than what you are. But I like it, you know, and then Wonder Woman and Superman head to the UN and are trying to talk about what's going on. And this is where they, like I said, they call it the the power keg and the gulag. And, um, Diana says the League will be forced to take a final decisive action. And we have, you know, the meeting where, you know, we see 
uh, Luther put the thing in Billy's ear, <clears throat> and Bruce punches Luther, finally. It's what we've all been waiting on, you know? Yeah. Only you can ensure the destruction. You demolish the Free and angry and erratic. That's that's heavy. Yeah, like they want some bad stuff to happen first. Of course, and then they sweep during all the confusion and everything. They uh, step in and take control. And, of course, you know, Luther tries to get away. Batman trying to stop Billy. Um, all the bad spot stuff, Luther. And Billy, of course, says, Shazam. And, oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah, well, he says Shazam, I mean, the way he describes what's been happening to Billy, um, you know, being being, being broken, uh, that his brain has been driven to the point of driven to insanity by the universe. Yep. To eat away at his mind. To says Shazam to become Captain Marvel again and like, that's just a dangerous combination. Yep. Where's that wisdom of Solomon? Speaking of Captain Marvel, I just got to throw this out there, slash Shazam. Since I've been sick, I was laying in bed, and uh, Janine was by my side, and I was like trying to get motivated to get up and do stuff, and I just laid there, and I was like, Shazam! And then I started, like, shaking, and she just started, like, cracking up laughing. And I was like, what? She's like, you're so funny and dorky. I'm like, hey... I was giving it a shot. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Help. Well, I sent you that bit. I sent you that uh, video that me and Jimmy made a couple, heck, at least a year ago now. Maybe <laughs> to the. Oh, I, yeah. I think it's two because it was pretty close right. to when the movie came out. We uh, made a little video of Jimmy walking up saying Shazam transfer. <laughs> yeah, it was, was a pretty awesome. good little edit. <laughs> Because, yeah, just wait till it's really where it's me walking and I say she's him and I turn into James. The only guy that's <laughs> talk about. But then we go back and we see Diana putting on like her war uniform, getting her sword from Hephaestus, and it cuts Superman because he, his, uh, his, volum- his magic. And with their, their gold eagle armor, magic sword. Sword gift best it can carve electron off that. That's my favorite uh, Greek god. I, I always joke like if I had a kid and I named him after a Greek mm-hmm. god, it'd be Hephaestus, just because that's an awesome name to say. Screw Zeus, Hephaestus. Yeah. Is yeah. Really good. Um, and then we have Slight. them basically. Uh huh. They're all getting ready to leave. We find out they killed Captain Comet. Don't know if I ever met Captain Comet before, but you know. And uh, Diana kisses Clark in a kiss completely devoid of passion. It's a final farewell. And Clark is left standing. And he goes flying to the Batcave. And this is a good argument between the two of them. Where Batman and Superman, he's like, I need your help. He says, shut up, I don't have time for your holier-than-thou craps. You are not above all this. Not now. This this has stakes this high. You're not above all this. Not now. Not with the stakes this high. And then Batman's like, the gulag is ready to blow. He's like, even as we speak, Wonder Woman and the League are outside its walls. 
and there they are, standing there ready to go. And then Bruce tells him the big one, Captain Marvel. And like, did anyone just forget that Captain Marvel existed? Like, nobody's been like, hey, whatever happened to Captain Marvel? Right. Eh. Well, in a world where there's uh, thousands, gajillions, maybe even more superhero or um, superpowered beings. It's just, it's just interesting, you know, like, <laughs> everyone's like, <coughs> oh, Captain Marvel. Yeah, I remember that guy. He owes me five <laughs> bucks. Yeah. You know, like, so, but, and then Superman takes off. And I love the imagery of seeing him fly as fast as he is. And I love that they say, I see Ragnarok, Ragnarok last unfold. And you see Superman flying, and then he gets taken down by a single bolt of lightning, and Armageddon has arrived. And that's the end of the book. Kabik. Hopefully next next month, you know, I'll feel better, so I don't say mm. crap. Yeah. Yeah. But this one's all, like, this is, you know, like... This is the end of your second act, you know, and now it's your third act. All CGI battle. Right. Um, man, just the, the, the suit, you know, suits that Alex Ross, the, such a, such a beautiful art and like Wonder Woman's, um, clothing and then her, and her golden armor and red Robin arm stuff. Some of a some of it looks like suits, but it's funny how Superman and Shazam's uh, costumes look so uh, it's old school um, and almost even the gym. Like, that is true. That is true. I never thought of it like that, the gym or like, but yeah. The way the patterns and everything. Yeah, like they just, they look like, they, they look just like a cloth. <laughs> a cloth little suit to wear. Hmm. Interesting. <coughs> but all right, dear listeners, touch base with us. Send us an email. Let us know what you think. Get ready. Because October's coming full of new surprises. Remember.